Well, Mike Torres gets to follow that. <laughs> the native of Topeka, Kansas, played in the big leagues from 1967 to 1984 with seven different clubs. Won a World Series championship in 1977 with the New York Yankees, pitching two complete games during that series, a series in which he would have been MVP except for a guy named Reggie Jackson decided to hit three home runs in consecutive at-bats. He won 15 or more games in six consecutive seasons, was a 20-game 20 winner, 20 game winner and 29 record at the 306 ERA in 1975. He won 185 games in the big leagues, a 396 ERA. And a statistic that I am amazed at, especially in this day and age, 117 complete games. He is a member of the Kansas Baseball Hall of Fame, and we introduce you now to the newest member of the Kansas Sports Hall of Fame, Mike Torres. Thank you, everyone. Uh, as you well know, boy, these Yankees are tough, aren't they? <laughs> Ralph, great stories. Uh, and as he said, it, it can go on and on. Um, as a kid growing up, I will have to say, and I, I said it, that I used to follow your career. And uh, you were an inspiration for me because I used to follow you all the time. I was a Cardinal fan growing up. Of course, I used to listen to Harry Carey and all that. And, uh, the Cardinal teams back when I was growing up in Topeka, but uh, it, it was great. Uh, you had a great career, saw your numbers, and you were also an outstanding pitcher. Uh, I guess, you know, looking back, I'm, I'm thinking, gee, how did this all happen? I mean, I, I did all this, and I'm going, you know, I had to do something right, I guess, you know. I guess growing up, I guess my dad, what we used to do, and it's what I try to tell a lot of parents and coaches, or, kids and grandkids, you know, my dad used to spend maybe 10, 15 minutes just playing catch with me. And he'd come home from work, just catch. And he did that every day as a kid, not about seven, eight years old. And that's, I think, helped me to get myself going. And my dad was there, I always took pride, you know, being there and just playing catch with my dad. And, and my dad asked me, come on, let's go play catch. And, okay. Uh, and that's how I think I got started, what got me interested in. And I think today, if the parents, uh, kids, you have kids, you want to have your kids be one of the better ball players. You got to work with your kids. If you don't work with your kids, uh, you're not going to get better. Uh, I know that they rely on, on family, uh, brothers or sisters. If you haven't, play with them. You know, play catch because that's what, how I started. Uh, and this is how I guys. You know, I went out to St. Louis. Uh, I was in high school. Did not even play high school baseball. Did not have um, my brother Johnny, who had played there at Topeka High. Uh, they had a baseball team, but I tell people today that I didn't even play high school baseball, and it may have saved my uh, career pitching as long as I did. But I know one thing that uh, by doing that, Mary McDonald, who was a baseball coach at Washburn, I guess they had seen I had just played. The only thing I played was American Legion. I really didn't really get to pitch until my senior year in high school in American Legion. That's when everything came together for me. And uh, Mary McDonald uh, drove my father and myself to St. Louis. And this is a great story because this is just a, this is sort of like a tryout. I mean, this is my first tryout when going to the old sportsman's park in St. Louis. So I, uh, they brought me into St. Louis, got dressed in the uh, big league, uh, clubhouse, put on the cardinal uniform, the old flannel ones back then, and they were hot, and it was like around August, and my God, it was in St. Louis, it was probably about close to 100 degrees. But anyway, the person who worked me out, the last person before he passed, was Branch Rickey. Branch Rickey worked with me, and, and he was working me out, and, and he was there watching me throw. Vern Benson, the third base coach at that time, uh, 1964, started catching me. And I started cranking it up pretty good. And he said, wow, you loose kid? And I said, no, not yet. He said, whoa, wait a minute. So he called Bob Euchre. Called Bob Euchre to come down from the clubhouse. <laughs> Bob Euchre going, hey, what's going on here? You know, crazy Bob is back up catching the Cardinals back then. And uh, he said, uh, Bernie said, no, I'm not going to catch this kid because I think he's a little bit too, too much. I, I can't handle it. And I was pumped up. I mean, he had the adrenaline going. And 
you know, it, it, it must have been something that I saved that particular day because I, I think I got up to about 100 miles an hour. But anyway, Branch Ricky says to me, he says, son, can I ask you a personal question? I said, yes, sir. He says, you Indian? I go, no, sir, I'm Mexican. He says, Mexican? Well, you're the biggest Mexican I ever seen. <laughs> So that was my uh, first uh, sign with the uh, with the Cardinals, and uh, I remember him saying, "Don't let this kid get away. Don't let this kid get away." He had that big raspy voice back then, and uh, you know, I ended up signing with the Cardinals, playing with them, broke in with great players. I, I lockered, uh, had the privilege locker next to Bob Gibson. He taught me the slider. I roomed with uh, uh, Carlton, uh, Steve Carlton, who uh, we roomed together for about five years, and then. Uh, it was just a great opportunity uh, for me to be in the big leagues. I didn't realize, I look back now, what I did. And Jesus, uh, I didn't realize, you know, that, you know, I, it, as you guys, a lot of the, the guys that are here, you look back and see, did I really accomplish all that? And it took hard work. It really did. It took hard work. It wasn't easy. Uh, you always had to compete because, you know, in, in baseball and I'm sure in all the other sports, they're signing guys left and right in the professional ranks to take your job. And if you can't, if you don't keep it up there, Somebody's going to take the job away from you. It's a lot different than being a top executive where you can, once you're in there, you can stay there for a while. But in baseball and in professional sports, there's always young kids that are coming up trying to take your, your spot. So you just have to be that much sharper, uh, learn to trade, you know, learn, you know, there's days that I didn't throw uh, 95, 96, 97. Some days I threw 91, 92. So I, but I had to learn how to pitch. And just like in life, you know, everything, uh, you have to take the good with the bad. I'm like Ralph, I gave up a home run uh, in a play, big playoff game against the Boston Red Sox, or against the Yankees in 78 in Boston, and, uh, and I'm still very well uh, known with Bucky Dent. <laughs> but Bucky and I do a lot of things, we do a lot of signings. Today the game has changed uh, with all the different, uh, it's more marketing today, the games in, in every sport has changed. Uh, back then we used to take black and white pitchers, Ralph, remember? Now they have all colored ones, and they, everybody's doing all these great things, and a lot of a lot of money in, in sports today. But I want to uh, thank my sisters who are back here, who came here. Our our family has been pretty tight. I have five sisters. One uh, Stella's in New York. My wife and my youngest son could not be here. Uh, I, he committed to uh, High Point, North Carolina, to maybe play baseball there, and she they had a uh, family weekend, uh, and they were trying to. <laughs> Last year I couldn't make it because my son got married on the same weekend, but uh, I want to thank, my mom's not here, uh, she couldn't, uh, she can't sit that long, uh, but anyway, all my, I love my brothers and sisters, to thank, thank them for coming, uh, have a lot, if I was to go through all my relatives and that, which we have about four to five hundred, we would build up this room here. But uh, again, uh, congratulate all the inductees, uh, everybody. They did a wonderful job in their careers, uh, no matter what they did. I'm just happy to be inducted. I'm part of Kansas. Everybody asked me where I'm from. Even I, I live now in Naperville, Illinois, but I always was proud of uh, being and raised in Topeka, Kansas, and, and being a, a Jayhawker. <laughs>